time as this. We discovered in our Bible reading that Moses was at his place in his time for such a time as this. He was called by God, as we've heard in our Bible readings, just like you and I are in this time and in this place for such a time as this. In our Bible readings, and I'm trying to fast forward just a little bit as I'm watching my clock, uh, in our Bible readings this morning, we discover God's name, we discover God's power, and we discover God's plan. So those three things, so if I have confirmation students in there, in here, three things, God's name, God's power, and God's plan. First, God's name. Moses sees this burning bush that doesn't burn, encounters God in this burning bush, and God says, I've heard the cries of my people, and I'm going to do something about it. I am going to set them free, and I'm sending you to work through. And Moses said, whoa, 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 whoa. Four times or five times, actually, he has excuses, but whoa, whoa, whoa. Me? Well, if I go and I say, yes, the God of my ancestors, your ancestors, has said, set my people free, and they ask me the question, well, what's his name? Uh, what am I to say? Names are important. And that's when God said, I am who I am. That's what you are to say. I am has sent me. I am who I am. It's kind of like Popeye, right? Popeye the sailor man. I am who I am. That's what comes to my mind anyways. I am who I am, or it can be translated, I was who I was. I am who I am. I will be who I will be. The God who was, is, and always will be. I am. And the Hebrew people shortened this up. The Hebrew phrase shortened up is Yahweh. Can you say Yahweh? Yahweh, Yahweh I am. Jesus claims the name I am also in the New Testament. You remember? Before your ancestors were, before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were, I am. He's claiming to be God in that time. He's claiming to be God in those statements. And we think further about it. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am, I am, I am Yahweh. Yahweh. So we get God's name. God's power. We learn of God's power, we, and chiefly through those ten plagues that we perhaps know so well. But that's not just a random show of God's power. There was purpose behind those ten plagues. For in each of those ten plagues, God, Yahweh, was taking on one of the gods or many of the goddesses of the Egyptian people. The first plague, or one of the plagues, the blood the uh, uh, Nile turns to blood, and the goddess of the Nile couldn't prevent that. God took on that goddess and prevailed. The plague of the frogs, one of the goddesses of Egypt had a frog head, and that frog-headed goddess couldn't prevent the frogs from coming and destroying the land. God is demonstrating God's power over and over again. God is able. God is able. When there's no way out, when it seems like there's no way out, God is able to provide a way through. You know how the story goes. They finally get out of Egypt and are walking along, and they get to, dang, the Red Sea. And there's no way through. The Red Sea in front of them, the chasing Egyptian army behind them, all is lost, doom and gloom, till Yahweh gets involved. 
you know, the Charlton Heston story, the parting of the Red Sea. Um, they walk through on dry land. The Egyptian army in hot pursuit gets in there and the waters crash down when it seems like there is no way God provides a way. There is a Christian slogan or a slogan on T-shirts. Uh, when the world says no way, God says Yahweh, right? When the world says no way, God says Yahweh. God promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have descendants. And ha, 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 we've already been part, through this part of the story, but ha, 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 I am so old. You know, I'm way past childbearing years. When Sarah and Abraham said no way, God said God told Moses to go and announce to the Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses, scared out of his mind, says, no way. But God said, yeah, God led them finally to the promised land a couple weeks from now when we're reading this under the leadership of Joshua. And God says to Joshua, this city, this fortified city of Jericho, it is yours. All you got to do is walk around it seven times and the walls will come tumbling down. And in my mind, I hear the little French peas in uh, um, the veggie tails. Keep walking, but you won't knock on her wall. Keep walking, but she isn't going to fall. It's plain to see. I I'm wasting time, sorry. Um, we'll get there in a couple of weeks. You know, the French peas and even... Joshua said, no way, but God said, yeah. all right, then we fast forward to Jesus. Jesus calls together a group, a ragtag group of 12 guys, not exactly the proper upright religious people, right? And Jesus loved them unconditionally. He mentored them and finally he equipped them for ministry and sent them out to change the world. And though the world might have looked at them and said, no way, God said, all right, when you, when you are faced with whatever struggles or obstacles in your life that you come up against, and don't we come up against them each and every day almost, whether it's relationship struggles or financial struggles or I just don't know what I'm going to do with my life or life is falling apart and they're predicting that the stock market is going to crash in or I don't know what. When we're looking at all that and all of those messages to us become no way. <laughs> don't stop there. No, no way is not the last word, but, but thank you. Thank you. So God's name is revealed. God's power, power for you and for me also is revealed. And finally, God's plan is revealed. And that happens in the events surrounding the 10th plague, the death of all firstborn sons in every household, except those marked, the doorposts marked with the blood of a sacrificial lamb. The angel of death would pass over those homes. And so we have the greatest story in the Old Testament of the Exodus, the Passover and the subsequent Exodus to freedom, to the promised land. Well, that was God's plan and continues to be God's plan. Fast forward to the New Testament. John the Baptist is with some of his friends, sees Jesus walk by and he says, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus, the Lamb of God. In 1 Corinthians, someplace, chapter 5, I believe, it says, For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed. Jesus is our Passover lamb. It is through the blood of Christ that we are saved from death. That was and is God's plan. So then my question for us today, to make something stick maybe, besides the French peas, um, how do we put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of our lives? We cling in faith and trust to Jesus.
We cling in faith and trust to Jesus and what Jesus has done. We say yes to the God who said yes to us in the waters of baptism. That's what affirmation of baptism is, and we've got several young people who will be doing that, just that, in a couple of weeks. Two weeks from today is affirmation of baptism Sunday, as they say yes to the God who said yes to them in baptism. And actually, affirmation of baptism is not necessarily to be a one-time event. Baptism is, but not affirmation of baptism. Any of us, can publicly affirm our baptism whenever we've had a faith moment, whenever we've had a faith awakening. And it's even more than that. Every day we can affirm our baptisms. Oh no, David, really? Yeah, somebody by the name of Martin Luther, our namesake, so I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in good company here, said this, day after day, our old selves, with all our evil sins and desires, should be drowned as we turn to God in humility and confession. And that day after day, a new self should arise. Day after day. Maybe that's another way of saying putting the blood of Christ on the doorposts of our life. We do that when we gather weekly for worship, when we come to receive Jesus in the bread and wine of communion. That's putting Jesus' blood on the doorposts of our life as we serve in ministry, as we read through Scripture, read from Scripture each and every day, and as we pray and as we serve and as we grow in our joyous giving, all of these marks of discipleship, we call them, are ways that we put the blood of Jesus Christ on the doorposts of our lives. The blood of the Lamb is the way that God chose to solve the problem of our sin nature of our disobedience, of our self-centeredness, so that God can live in a relationship with us and us with God, so that God can live in a relationship with you and you with God. Amen.